a secret location in Hollywood. It's the Tom Micah Show. We'll do it live. Do it live. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is. Not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Us 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. It's like is 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Lycus 101. The summer school edition. Let's review. Like us 101 students are here to learn how to get laid. Now, if you matriculated, if you went to registration day, and your plan was to take a course in how to have a better marriage, how to fix a broken marriage, how to ask your girlfriend to marry you, this is the wrong class. Go back down to the bursar's office and make the appropriate changes. We are here for one purpose. This is the teaching guys how to get laid with minimum effort and expense class. This is not the, I'm in love with my high school sweetheart and I would like to know what kind of surprise I should give her when I'm asking her to tie the knot. That's another class. Like us 101 students want to know how to get laid. How to get laid the most efficient way possible, spending the least amount of time, money, and energy on chicks who won't give us what we came for, which is to get laid. If you have a date scheduled for this weekend and you're not sure that the purpose of it is to get laid, cancel it while you're listening to me right now. Cancel it. If you're dating somebody who you call your girlfriend, End it tonight. No girlfriends. No relationships. No engagement rings. No flowers. No gifts. No candy. No compliments. Don't tell her how beautiful she looks. You're just giving away your power. Backhanded compliments only. Tell her that you don't care what your friends say, that you like a girl with a little meat on her bones. Tell her that it doesn't matter to you what she eats. Tell her more than a mouthful is a waste. One of the oldest backhanded compliments of our time. You know, you got AM, PM saying you can't have too much good stuff. Then you have someone else saying more than a mouthful is a waste. Which is it? 
You can have too much good stuff. She just doesn't have it. Do not tell her she's beautiful. Do not tell her she's attractive. Do not tell her she's the hottest. She, do not get drunk and start saying, oh, you're the most beautiful girl. You're so hot. All my friends are jealous. That's crazy talk. Don't be saying that stuff. You tell her that stuff, you'll never get what you want. Ever, ever, ever. Are you kidding me? Jesus! Like as one of one students, don't spend more than $40 on a date. Zero is optimum. How do we do it? A variety of ways. The most famous of all is we avoid dinner. The reason we avoid dinner, number one, you want her eating more dinner? Huh? Number two, if she's going to eat, you want to pay for it? Number three, when you eat dinner, you're going to be talking to her, and she's going to be talking to you. And the more you talk, the more likely it is you're going to give her an excuse not to have sex with you. The minute you tell her that you're who you're voting, you're voting for John McCain, or you tell her you drive a big car, or you tell her that uh, you're a Republican, or you tell her that uh, you hate cats. It, it, you know, it just takes the slightest little. You hate cats? Well, I could never sleep with a man who hates cats. Oh, seriously. You call her on the telephone and you say, Hey, uh, what time are you having dinner tonight? And she'll just unconsciously answer the question. Uh, I don't know, about 7.30, 8 o'clock. Great! That means you ought to be done about 9, 9.30. Why don't I pick you up about 9.30? We'll go out and have a drink. She doesn't realize you just aced her out of a dinner. And that's the idea. You go, you start consuming alcohol, you let her talk. Talk, 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 talk. Talk, 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 talk. Let her go blah, 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 blah. You say nothing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Is that so? Really? Mm hmm. Yeah? Your boss is like that? Is that so? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And you just keep feeding her the booze. Not too much, because you don't want her throwing up out your car window. Or out the taxi cab window. Or anywhere. Just enough so that uh, she'll be feeling a little tipsy. And then maybe, uh, if you're lucky, you could go back to her place with her. Here, let me help you. I'm, here, I'll take you home. Take her home. <laughs> Offer to come in. Get the job done. And then get the hell out of there. No staying over. No hugging, kissing, spooning, caressing. No staying over to the next day and having brunch together. Forget it. Get the job done. Put your pants on and get the hell out. Don't bring her to your place. Some of these girls are effing stalkers. You know what I'm saying? They find out where you live. You can't get rid of them. If you can avoid telling her your real last name and your real first name, by all means, avoid it. Can't make this any simpler. My job as your professor is to keep you from wasting time, money, and energy on chicks who don't give you what you came for, which is sex. I try to help you avoid commitment, avoid relationships, avoid marriage. We don't date single mothers, by the way, and we believe in the three strikes you're outlaw. Any woman who doesn't put out on three dates, dump her ass. By the way, if you have a date this weekend with someone you've gone out with three times or more, and they haven't put out yet, cancel that date right now. You're done. You're done with her. She's done. You're done. How easy can I make this? If you have questions, 
for your professor. If you have questions about how to avoid commitment, avoid relationships, how to get laid, how to avoid spending money, avoid commitment, how to avoid giving gifts, no gifts, no flowers, no jewelry, no Tiffany, no nothing. You understand what I'm saying? If you have questions about this, you can certainly contact your professor here at 1-800-5800-TOM. And uh, many ladies out there also uh, want to learn more about how men think. Some of you are upset by what the professor has to say. This is your opportunity to register your objection. 1-800-LIKE-IT-TOM. If a woman doesn't leave your home feeling used and humiliated, you're just not getting it done. It's Likus 101 on the Tom Likus Show. Like us 101 at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for telling him. <laughs> Sarah on Like Us 101. Hello. Hello. Yes. How are you? Great. Good. Hey, yeah, my question to you was, um, do you not believe in love at all? Or you just believe if you get married, it should be a business. And if I don't know what you mean by believing. If you mean by believing in love, that I would do irresponsible things with my life because I love somebody. Well, in that sense, I don't believe in it. Okay, Um, that's fair enough. So basically, you just treat it as a business because you're protecting yourself. Well, marriage is definitely a business. It's a corporation. You're laughing. It, that's exactly what it is. You're forming a corporation. This is, there's some truth to that. Not some truth. Uh, you Your marriage certificate uh, yeah, it does not come to you right away. I don't know if you've ever been married. Uh-huh, I am. Uh, when you get married, uh, the judge does not hand you the marriage certificate. It is sent to Sacramento, if you live here in California, where it gets the raised seal of the Secretary of State of the state of California, just like uh, corporate uh, registration papers. And you are forming a corporation in which each party owns 50% of the proceeds. In the state of California, yeah. And that's where you live, dear. So my question then is, I guess, I mean, you answered it, I guess. You don't believe that you would do anything irrational because of a feeling or an emotion. That's right. I will not. I will not mix up my money and my property uh, with my feelings of sexuality. No, no, no. Sex is totally different. No, it Sex isn't. Is separate. No, it isn't. Yes, it it's is. It's part of the package. Come on. And it is the reason men do irresponsible things like saying, "I don't need a prenup." It's not just for the sex. Yes, that's why men say they don't need a prenup. <laughs> the sex is so good they don't want to risk giving it up. Do you really buy that? Oh, yes. I've been married and divorced four times, and I know countless men who have made stupid moves like getting married without a prenup, and I know why they did it, too. Okay, so then when you got married, what were your thoughts behind getting married? I didn't want to get married, but I knew that if I didn't get married, uh, I would lose the other person. Uh, So as long as they were willing to sign a contract that said that I wasn't giving them anything, um, then it was truly for love. (laughs) <laughs> that's I, that's good I, I buy that um, it's you know women are very bad at being logical to begin with so what's interesting is when you say to a woman uh, you say you know if you really love me if you're not marrying me for the money then you'll sign this it's like they can't argue the way around that right well I mean the response would be well I am marrying you for the money that's why I won't sign <laughs> <laughs> well, I got married young enough. I didn't have any money. So. Yeah, but darling, you have to understand. You see, the first time I got married, just because I didn't have anything, didn't mean I believed I would never have anything. Right, but don't you join that? But that's joined 
jointly. Not if you, not if you have a, not if you have a prenup. Well, if you're going through life together and you're a team. We're not a team. If I if I am making millions of dollars in the radio business and you're staying home growing tomatoes and going to Starbucks meeting your friends for coffee at three in the afternoon. Oh my god. Then then we are not a team, okay? Uh But what are if what if they're doing what if they're doing the laundry? What if they're doing it's not the worth meal? half of what I make. And by the way, living alone, I prove it because hey. I have I have people to help. I've got a gardener and I've got a housekeeper, and the total cost of all of those people is way less than hiring a wife. <laughs> you make that much money. <laughs> Not only do I make that much money, but they don't cost that much money. Well, okay. I mean, well, my housekeeper makes one hundred and fifty dollars a week. Right. That's a lot cheaper than a wife. Yeah, but you figure someone to cook, someone to clean, that does your well, laundry. Well, by the way, what about, what most, about by the way, darling, I don't know how many women you've been married to. Most American women aren't doing a lot of cooking or cleaning anymore. Now, you may be doing it. I don't know. But most aren't. What about taking care of kids? What about taking Same care of Same thing. You know, most women say, I don't want to give up my career. I want to work part time. And they, they take the kid to daycare, which costs as much or more than what they make at their jobs. Yeah, no, I agree. If you're going to stay home, so so, uh, why do I need to hire you for that? For that, because it's I can go, job. I can, I can have a kid through in vitro fertilization or a surrogate mother, and I could have the kid dropped off at daycare every day. I don't need you to drive the minivan. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's get back to the relationship. What do I need you for? Well, do, what, do you don't have you don't believe in companionship? Or I, like you think I don't you think I don't or, have friends or companions? Well, I've got plenty of them. So it's not really about sharing your life. No, it's somebody. about giving you half of everything I make. <laughs> I make a seven figure income. What could you possibly do that would be worth half of that? <gasps> oh my gosh, you've really never met me. No. <laughs> Darling, yeah, I don't care if there isn't any chrome on a trailer hitch within 40 miles of your home. There's nothing you could do that would be worth half of what I make. Wow. 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 Why are you so shocked at that? That's a little bit of an ego. It has nothing to do with ego. I'm talking about you, dear, not me. Half of what I make, what? So so you can uh, make me a sandwich once in a while? <laughs> okay, okay, you're but you're talking with the mindset that it's going to end, that it's going to be over. It, but by the way, half of all marriages do end in divorce and in Southern California, where you and I happen to live. Two out of three end in divorce. Hmm. You have to think like it's going to end because it usually does. Well, if you go into it thinking it's going to end, then of course. But it usually end. does. Okay, usually. Uh, again, so I have to protect myself. You know, when I get in my car, the chances are one in 10,000 that I'll have a head-on collision. Do you think I don't have car insurance? I'm sure you do. I'm sure you have Well, if that. I go into the car the, with that mentality, I'll have an accident. If I think I'm going to have an accident, I probably will, right? Okay, so, but do you get into your car every day thinking you're going to die? But by the way, I have insurance every day. Okay, but just in case is, is protection. I, ha I mean, I've like, and that's insurance. what a prenuptial agreement is protection. Okay, but I'm talking about the mindset that, and you it's much more you. likely that you will divorce me and take half of everything I have, have than I would get hit by another car. When you just have a mindset that you're going to go into something that it's going to end or possibly going to end, or oh, no, hardly end. any more than I have a mindset that I'm going to die in a fatal accident when but I yeah, get car insurance. Are you telling me you drive? Why do you need car insurance? You don't drive that car like you're going to die today. You don't call your family members and say your last goodbyes every time. Well, you I, I pay. You why do I die. pay? Why do I pay car insurance? That's totally different. How? Apples and oranges. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. If you go into a car with the mindset that you're going to have a fatal accident, you're going to have a fatal accident. That, you just made my point. If you get car insurance, I'm being facetious, dear. If I get car insurance, I must be saying that I expect to have a fatal accident, right? So I'll tell you what. Why don't you cancel your car insurance? Oh, my. Well, don't you believe in love? Just cancel your car insurance while you're at it, dear. Do you have home insurance? Do you have, do you live in a house? Yes, I own a home. Well, and I you have don't have. Insurance. Why do you have homeowners insurance? Cancel it. Okay, because accidents happen. Oh, when you make a decision, accident, but they're not likely to happen. 
No, accidents happen. You are much more like. By the way, darling, you're much more likely to get divorced than to be robbed. Okay, but listen to me. Let me complete this thought. (laughs) (laughs) Darling, all you're doing is filibustering. No, I. You know that what I just said is what I just said true or not? Divorce is not an accident. It's a choice. Again, you don't make a choice. By the way, sometimes you don't make the choice. Sometimes the other person comes home and says, "I found the love of my life. It's been very nice knowing you." (laughs) It's not a choice you make necessarily. Sometimes it's a choice the other person made. My second wife, I I loved being married to my second wife. You know what? One day I found out she was stooping somebody else. It was not my choice. And do you know what she said to me after I found out what she was doing? What? She said, I'm going to hire an expensive attorney, and I'm going to take you for everything you've got. Well, you didn't really... Uh, no, 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 don't start with that, darling. Make this was not This was not you. my choice. This was not my choice. But, okay, you, then you have poor judgment. Oh, really? Well, we choice. have no idea what your husband will do one day or what he's already doing. Huh. We have no idea. No, you're right. right. We don't, but I trust that enough. Great, and just like all the other people who trust, you'll be there in the recycle bin with all the other wives. <laughs> well, I think I'll be able to brush myself off. But... Well, that's because you'll probably get half of everything your husband earned. He doesn't earn anything. Really? He's a deadbeat. Yeah. You married a deadbeat. Well, I was twenty years old. I didn't think he'd be a deadbeat forever. <laughs> really? So you earn all the money. Um, pretty much at this point, yes. What do you do for a living? I work for MetLife. You work for MetLife doing what? Insurance. No, sales. No, I know that. Oh, you sell insurance. Oh, I'm part of our oh, sales Oh, you're one of those. Well, I don't really sell it. I'm part of our sales team. Well, what, what do you mean you're part? You, you're, you're the typist for the sales department? Pretty much. You can say it that way. Wow. Obviously. How much does that job pay? I'm not going to say what it pays. A lot of people, I, $10 I, uh, an I hour. listen to you. $10 an hour? More than that. How much? I would say more than $20 an hour. Ooh, wait. Are you telling me you make $40,000 a year? Wow, wow, wowza, wow. No, I make over $40,000 a year. Wow, wee. And so you don't live in a house. You live in an apartment in Irvine, right? Well, it's... Because that's house. all you can afford. You own a house. How'd you do that? Well, I bought one that was low. I'm smart. It's- Come on, darling. There's not a house in Irvine you could buy on $40,000 or $42,000 a year. For Come one, on. I started at a condo, and my husband and I bought our place together, so there was another income at the time. All right. So you already know he's a deadbeat and a loser, but you love him. Yeah. So, well, we'll see what he's doing while you're out at MetLife during the day, and he's at home with a lot of time on his hands. I already know what he's doing. Yeah, what is he doing? Nothing productive. Uh huh. Well, maybe he's doing something productive. You know what I'm saying? Ba bum, ba bum, ba bum. <laughs> well, so what if he is? <laughs> Am I going to go cry? Oh, real? Oh, look hair? at you! So what if he's banging somebody else? Who cares? Hey, everyone. You get all the free mistakes. Snoopy stationery you need. Who cares what he's doing? Well, everyone makes mistakes, right? And not as many as you, apparently. Tom like is. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I just started watching your show or whatever, and I'm hearing all the stuff that you say. Where are you, outside the door? A little bit. I'm driving. No, I mean outside my door. You said you just started watching the show. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean. Where are you watching from? On the radio. Oh, you just started listening to the show. Oh, I see that. You got time to be funny. The Tom Likas Show. Hollywood. It's Likus 101, your indispensable guide to getting laid without any responsibility whatsoever. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Lori on the Tom Likus Show. Hello. Hello, dear. Hello there. How are you? I'm great. Tom, I love listening to you. I love your viewpoint. I am just afraid that these guys that listen to your show are going to interpret your monologue as an okay to go ahead and take advantage of a drunk girl in terms of, like, regardless of whether she says yes or no. I'm, so, darling, what makes you think you're smarter than the average listener? I, 
I listen to your show. <laughs> but darling, you're a listener too. Yeah, and I like your show, and I'm not saying that I'm any smarter. I'm just saying I don't... I would hate for a lot of guys to misinterpret what you're saying as... Well, okay I, to, again, I, I can't worry about it. You know, you know, Charlie Manson, Charlie Manson ordered the murder of a bunch of people because he heard a song written by George Harrison of the Beatles called Helter Skelter, which was a song about a seesaw. Right. Now, I would hate to see somebody misinterpret that song, go out and murder people, but that didn't stop George Harrison from writing the song, and I can't worry about somebody misinterpreting a very clear and specific message from this program. If somebody does, so be it. Right. Well, the only reason I wanted to come on is just to say to all your listeners, date rape is not a nice thing to do to a girl. So, I mean, No one has ever suggested that date rape or any rape is appropriate on this program. No one said it did. But and, anyway, and, and the average listener is no, the average listener is no stupider than you. Let me tell you something. The average listener is no stupider than you. I'm not saying you're stupid. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Here you are thinking you know more than everybody else, darling. What? All right. It's enough. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, uh, well, 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 Ian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, that caller before the, uh, before the commercial, um, you had a rebuttal for everything that, uh, she said. That's why I love your show. Thank you. Um, and I agree with just about everything you say, like that cell phone, uh, show that you had a couple weeks ago, um, I was talking to my friends about it um, the day before you actually had that show, and it was just hysterical to hear you agreeing with every point that I was making. But um, I was wondering if you were open enough for me to change your mind on something. I listen to whatever everybody has to say here. Um, I think that you don't believe in love. What? How do you define love? Well, I guess that's the whole. I guess that's the whole issue. Um, my understanding of love is uh, putting yourself, um, you know, yourself and your needs um, uh, after somebody else's. Uh, you, what you don't understand, Ian, is I can put someone's needs ahead of my own uh -huh. as long as I'm with them. Okay. Well, what I don't want to do is to be paying somebody for previous services rendered after I'm gone. Huh. Okay. Well, I... I and that is what marriage allows. It allows a woman to continue receiving an annuity long after I'm gone. Yeah, that's... Actually, that is very true. Okay. So, uh, maybe you're not as uh, jaded as I thought. Then. There we go. 1-800-5800-TON. Never mind. Let's say hello here to Sean on Like Us 101. Hello. 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 All right, we'll put Sean on hold, and we'll let Dean go looking for him. Lillian on the Tom Like Us show. Hello, Lillian. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello. I've listened Hi. to you for years. Hello. I believe Hi. most of the stuff you say. Yeah. But... Um, I just have one question to ask. As much money as you make, you're always talking about your money. I as, am. as much action as you get, because you're always talking about all the action that you yes. get. And how, quote unquote, famous you are, at least in the Southern California area. Yes. And with, with the Internet, I'm assuming in a lot more places, right? Right. So all these women that you, quote unquote, date... How come not one of them has ever written anything about you or tried to sell something about because you? Because there's nothing they can say about you. Make that, you know, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because there's nothing they can say about me that I haven't already told you myself. Oh, I'm sure there is. I mean, when I tell you I am the when I tell you when I tell you when I tell you that I am the worst son of a bitch, when I'm I'm a bastard. I'm a creep. Yeah, but I'm talking that I don't care about the sexual satisfaction of others. That I'm only in it for myself. What about them? If they don't get you know, I mean I'm already telling you that they're not likely to get anything. Sexually in other words. I'm not I make no such promises. 
I'm, but I all mean, I know is one of I'm in it for me. To let people know. The, uh, they already know. <laughs> I just <laughs> let them know again. Because to listen to you. What you... could anybody possibly say about me that I haven't already said about myself? I don't know. That's uh, you know, why. I, I, it just really amazes me. But that should tell you something. If no one has done it, if you. no one has done it, that should tell you something, shouldn't it? Well, may maybe because it's not true what you say. That you don't date all these women. You just say you do. Oh, I see. So I'm just kind of sitting at home twiddling my well, thumbs. Well, I don't know. Waiting for showtime. I mean, to you know, I'm out. sure there's women when you're like at the Playboy Mansion or when you're in front of the cameras or whatever because they like to get their pictures taken with you and stuff. But as far as going all the way with you, maybe, you know, you don't get as much as you claim to. Well, darling, I get as much as I claim to, probably get more than I talk about, actually. <laughs> well, I don't know because I know if it was me, I'd be telling everybody and their brother every detail that went on. You know, but, but again, good, if I already if I already tell you that I guarantee nothing, <laughs> including an orgasm, I guarantee nothing. If somebody says, "Guess what? I got nothing." Do you promise? What? That, would that be a surprise? What kind of story would that I mean, be? These women go with you, and and they know that they're not going to even get sexual. I, I if they listen to the not program, get any, anything out if of If they you? listen to the program, they know. <laughs> I because I tell you. Yeah, I know that, but why do they go with you then? I don't know. Because I've got money, power, and fame. Yeah, but you don't give them money, uh, and you don't. They, they don't all, get any power darling. Here's what you don't understand: women think that they can change us. No, that not. Yes, we're not. I'm not talking about you. Yeah. This is not the Lillian show, okay? Yeah. <laughs> women <laughs> in general, <laughs> women in general think they can change us, mm -hmm. and so even if I say I'm not giving any money, I'm not, try. they're all going to say, "I know you can't they're do that. Try. I know you're not like the way you say you are. I know you're not the way you are on the radio. I know that." And so I, uh, I fine. And they rock and roll with me in the sack a few times. And then after and a while, they're like, they're how you. come we never go to the movies? <laughs> how come you never take me to dinner? How come we never go to brunch? I Believe me, I've heard this a million times. And then I look at them and I say, do you listen to my show? <laughs> and like, well, I didn't think you really liked that. Well, I am really like that. Well, I'm not going to go out with you anymore. Well, that's perfect because right this is about the time I, I already got what I wanted. <laughs> that's perfect. Hmm. Thank you for your patronage. Well, you know, that's I, I, I'm really surprised that you really gave me a really good answer to my question. You're surprised that I gave you a good answer? Yes, I am. No, I'm surprised that you gave me a good answer. I knew you were going to give me some kind of an answer, you know. But the, as truthful as you've been with me, it, it's surprising to me. Well, this is the reason why people can't go behind my back and say things about me. Nobody says worse well, things I'm, about I'm me. Talking, uh, Nobody says worse and more honest things about me than me myself. Yeah, but see, I'm not talking about your people. I'm talking about about the women that you that's what I'm talking about with. that's what I'm talking about that no woman has anything but you know how they say uh, uh, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned yeah, but again here <laughs> by the way I, I showed you the video of the woman who peed on my front door I actually put that right, right. right? Mm -hmm. and I told you about the woman who showed up at my house at 1245 right. a.m. and rang the bell for right. 45 minutes right I mean believe me I, I've scorned some women there's no <laughs> doubt about it Okay, yeah. but uh, but I've told you all about what they've done yeah. and why they did it. Yeah. So what could they possibly say that I haven't already told about myself? I, I don't know, but I, you know, somebody, but if there was something, they would. You're right; they would have said it. They, you know, they're very stupid. Women. You can't make a book out of having sex with me three times. <laughs> That's that's another reason. Especially they, if it wasn't any good. You're right? surprised. No, no, but that's the point. You're saying you're surprised someone hasn't written a book. Yes, well, or, or not necessarily a book. But if you married me and it stayed with me for five years, you could write a book. But come on, you did me three times. Then you said, "How come we never go anywhere?" And I said, "Because I I, I don't believe in taking you anywhere." And then they stopped seeing me. I, now, what are they going to do? Go to Simon and Schuster and go? I got this great idea for a book. I dated Tom Likas three times. I never had an orgasm, and he never took me to the movies. And I, I, I want to write a 300-page book about that. But, you know, this, I, to me, this, a lot of your male listeners, because, you know, you talk about how easy it is and stuff. But, like you say, you have power. You have money. Right. Whereas they have to lie about it, most of them, right? So they're not getting... But, like, but darling, what you don't understand is I've only been rich the second half of my life. The first half of my life, I was as poor or poorer than uh, 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 of any of the listeners who call in. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you worked your way up. and you know, But I've been doing the same thing. You know, when I was on the radio in Albany, New York, and I made $18,000 a year, mm -hmm. I, I was getting laid all the time. Do you know why? 
why? Because women thought because I was on the radio, I was making a hundred thousand dollars a year. You were famous, yeah. Well, I was making eighteen. I, I was making eighteen thousand a year. I had a mattress on the so, floor, and I, I back in the day, this company doesn't even exist anymore. I for five dollars a week, I rented a color TV. It was rent to own from Granada TV <laughs> Rental, and it sat on top of a milk crate. I got a crate and barrel. And that was rent my, to own at least. It was rent to own, <laughs> and it sat on top of the the plastic milk crate. Been there, done that. But but you see, I I was still getting chicks yeah. because the idea is to let, let let women think you're a bigger deal than you are. If they if you think I'm a big deal because I'm on the radio, I'm uh -huh. not going to try to talk you out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. I guess there's women that would you know want to try to change you to get some of that money or most some of, of that them. power. Most of them. But they should know by now that it's not going to happen. They, every one of them thinks they have the magic vagina. Every one well, of them thinks... Well, actually, you know, I'm, I've got a magic mouth, not a magic vagina. Is that I so? I still wouldn't want to change you. Really? I mean, I still know I wouldn't... You've got a magic mouth and you wouldn't want to change it. <laughs> I, not that I wouldn't. I know that I couldn't. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. I couldn't ever. Right. And 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 these women actually, I guess they're young and dumb and haven't, you know, because I've been around the block a few times, you know. So they're young, dumb, and full there of my go. inspiration. There you, there you go. They're looking for the the stars in the sky. Right. Mm, well, you know, I'm I'm really glad that I called. This is the first time I ever called you. I've been listening to you for years. My husband hates you, oh boy. but I listen to you all the time. <laughs> Well, anytime you want to bring that magic mouth out, I'll be happy to take a look. You don't have enough money for that, babe. I wouldn't I give you any anyway. I don't how many millions you got. Yeah, but you'd, you'd get to be in the presence of greatness. Plus, I'm Latina. Oh, that's what With I love. black hair. Really? But I'm too old for you. Well, <laughs> in the dark, it's all about the mouth. That's true. Well, no, not for me, you know. Really? <laughs> well, I got to go because they don't pay me overtime here. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, it was really nice talking to you. Sure was. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. <laughs> Let's say hello here to Sean on Like Us One Hundred One with your professor. Hello, Father. Son. How you doing? I'm Hi, doing Father. great. Been listening for about six months. This is the first time I called. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Sure um, is. Just letting you know, Father, uh, I've been getting more ass than a rental car since I've uh, started listening to you on more the radio. More ass than a rental car? Yes, sir. But uh, I got a success story for you, actually. Right. Um, about two weeks ago, I was uh, I, I took this... Tom, no, no BS. She's she's a nine. She was she was hot. I took her to dinner. Um, we uh, we went out, uh, sat down, and before I get started, when I, when I walked up, she was on her cell phone text messaging, and I was like, um, you know, I was like, okay, um, I kind of see how this is this is going to get started. It's getting started kind of rocky. So we uh, we go and we sit down. Um, First thing she does is she she goes, hey, I'm going to go to the bathroom really fast. And so, uh, you know, that we had ordered drinks at that time. She goes to the bathroom. She comes out, and, you know, I, I look down towards the bathroom. Um, she's on her phone again, text messaging. She puts it away, and she uh, comes and, and sits down at the table. Then we order, you know, I, I, I'm human pretty much at this point. So when we order, we order food. And uh, she whips out her phone again and, and you know, uh, starts text messaging somebody. And the only thing I could think about was a caller that I listened to probably about three months ago that, that you know, had, had just walked out on her. And so, you know, I excused myself. And she had her back to the bathroom, um, you know, just uh, went to the bathroom and, and, and just, just walked out on it. Um, reason it was an absolute success, Father, is I now – have this chick however I want it, whenever I want it, and wherever I want it. And for your caller, Lori, about uh, three callers ago, I believe that was her name, uh, talking about uh, getting getting the girls, you know, liquored up and, and talking about date rape. There's no alcohol involved, Lori. Look at you. Sean, thank you so much for the call. The Tom Likas Show.